Welcome back to Briggs on Books, our, our international talk show on books. I've got an author you've got to meet. Look at this book here. Uh, uh, he writes everything from uh, uh, science fiction, uh, space opera, all the way through to nonfiction stuff. A fascinating mind and a fascinating author. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of his books in about 10 minutes here. Welcome, Raymond Burke. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for having me on the show. Tell our Honor. viewers where you are, Raymond. I'm in London, England. Yeah. Uh, lived all my life, moved around. Now, here in California, it's about 1.45 p.m. What time is it in London? Yeah, it's eight hours ahead, so it's like 9.45. At Almost night. time for bed. At night time, at the <laughs> night time, yeah. Now, you started in what, Canada? Yeah, so I was born and lived in England, and then the family, we moved to Canada, we moved to the States, and mm -hmm. then came back to England. So we're, we're spaced out at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm back in London, England at the moment. I want to whip through a couple of these books. They're just fascinating. Um, the number one book, uh, you're going to have to help me because I can't see that far. Oh, Magna Aura Genesis. Yes. So uh, that's the beginning of my Star Guard saga. Okay. It's going to be about nine or ten books. I've written five at the moment, working on six. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a long, a long journey. Now, is this what you call the... Uh, the uh, space, kind of space opera kind of series? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's Greek mythology meets Battlestar Galactica meets Justice League America. So it's got superheroes, time travel, space mm -hmm. adventure, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. And by the way, here's the second uh, installment, the Axelon Revelation. The Axelon Revelation, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the third book, uh, uh, the Terra Chronicles. Yes. And what is the, uh, 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 I mean, is this modern day? This is a made up uh, uh, kingdom, or how, how would you characterize yeah, it? Yeah, this is made up. So you've got a, a group of heroes who call themselves the Celestian Knights. And basically, they're about to meet their enemy for the very last time. It's been prophesied that this is going to happen. So they send their children, the Star Guards, and, the, and some of their civilization to a new universe. And it's all about their journeys from the beginning of time to the end of time, basically. Uh, you've got different branches of the family. Some can time travel. And uh, they come to Earth. They're in different dimensions, different times. So they're all over the place. Yeah. And by the way, here's the most recent, I think. Is this right, the Celestian Odyssey? Yeah, the Celestian Odyssey. Yeah. Very good. So they're, they're kind of coming... Um, what do you call it, a, an order of the series, basically. Mm -hmm. So the first four books deal with one part, and then you, the next three books deal with a different part. And, uh, yeah, it's... Um, and there's more I to know come. The, the very end, so I just need to get there. And there's more <laughs> to come in this series, is that correct? But, yeah, there's more to come. There's I'm working on book six, and there's about nine or ten books altogether. Yeah. i tell you what book I contacted you and said, hey, i got to get you on the show. It's this one right here. Uh, the Future of the 3D Printing. Tell us about this book. This is nonfiction, I would imagine. Yeah, The, the Future of the 3D Printing Culture. Uh, I'm not an engineer or a designer, but I got into 3D printing. And basically, I got my 3D printer. I wanted to put it somewhere in my house, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And <laughs> when I looked, there was no kind of furniture, no kind of proper desk to put a, a 3D printer on. Uh, it was like a lap table from Ikea or people just made up stuff. Yeah. So I thought I'd build a company around it and then I got into different kind of ideas around 3D printing and how to get it into homes. And I think you'd have to do that through the, the cultural method yeah. because if, when people want something, it's because they need it. So they might not need 3D printing in their lives now, but if you said to them, oh, you can make food with it, yeah. maybe a T-shirt, get furniture for it, like you've got a computer desk, yeah. uh, you know, you've got a gaming station, then get something for 3D printing as well. Yeah. And then I looked into the energy of it and how to conserve energy. And there was a whole bunch of um, aspects of 3D printing uh, because people think it's just about printing plastic. Yeah. But you've got metals, you've got sand, you've got glass. You can build houses, so, you know, uh, a whole ceramics. There's a whole bunch of materials that you can use with 3D printing, which people don't realize. You know, just a few years ago, we didn't realize that we needed a, a phone and a camera and a computer that we would exactly. carry everywhere in our hand. Do you think that's the future of 3D printing? We're all going to have it? I, I believe so. Uh, 
there are a lot of um, printing services now, so people can order things and go and collect it or have it mm. ordered to them. But I think having something in the house, you know, it will probably start off doing something like plates and cups, mm -hmm. little things you can have around the house, things yeah. you can have for yourself rather than selling. Um, you can maybe make money from renting it out to someone else yeah. or having a little print, 3D print farm yourself as well. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of um, benefits that you can have from, from 3D printing. Now, uh, sorry to go through all these so quickly, but I wanted to get sure. to these mussings. Uh, about, uh, what's the word I learned today? Infovore? Infovore. And what is infovore? A lover of information. It's uh, what I heard, uh, read on the, uh, the New Scientist magazine about 15 years ago. And I just kind of took it for, for my own like and just said, I'm an infovore. I love mm. information. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, you know, I've got the, the couple of books yeah. about it. Here's um, another one, Imaginings of an Infovore. So, uh, and these yeah, are just notes. Imaginings no and, and musings of an mm. infovore. Yeah, and these are notes or short stories or what? Yeah, so um, and about, well, you know when people have ideas and they think, oh, I better write it down or whatever. <laughs> I wrote down my ideas, things about life, uh -huh. things about history, you know, politics, science, religion, all those kind of ideas I had, which people talk about. I wrote articles about them and I put them in books. Nice. And I collected them all together during COVID as well. So I've had all these articles during the years. Mm -hmm. And during COVID, I had the time to get them all together and publishing them in a book, basically. So yeah, it's nice. It's me. It's all about me. <laughs> That's good. How fun. I think there's a lot of people who would like to read that. Uh, just your random thoughts over the years and years and years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, all these books are on Amazon. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, they, they are uh, self-published um, through Ingram. And, and Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they're, they're all on Amazon, and they can find them in bookstores as well. Um, so like over here in England, it would be like Waterstones or Foils right. or Blackwells. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's Barnes and Nobles over there. Barnes and Noble, yeah. Before we're totally out of time, I'm going to go back to your. Is it you call it the Star Guard series? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, I have their web address up the StarGuards.com, and yeah. uh, there's what maybe four or five published in this series so far. Uh, there's five published. Uh, I'm working on the sixth one now. Okay. My thick manuscript. And and more to come. And who who yeah. who will who will read these? Oh, th this is from, you know, from you from young to old. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's got um, you know, of course, it's got the the whole gamut from kids, teenagers, adults mm -hmm. in the books. Um, so yeah, th there's no reason why anyone. It's like adult out yeah. trade, yeah. basically. So I, yeah. I just know there's a lot, just from doing the show since 2008, I know there's a lot of people out there that like to read science fiction and, and yeah. uh, things like that. And, and I can tell you have a brilliant mind that's going a million directions all at once all the time. And, <laughs> and I know, I know is, yeah. you're a collector of information, <laughs> as you would say, infovore. And so I yeah. think these are going to be fascinating books. And I hope people will go read them. By the way, you know, the way I buy books is I never buy one copy. I always buy four or five copies. Wow. I, I wow. like other people to be reading the same thing I read. And I like to give books as gifts and stuff like that. So go out there and order some <laughs> of these books. Says that. Yeah, that's great. Order some of these books for, uh, from Raymond. Get his books and uh, visit his website. It's there on the screen, starguards.com. And uh, Raymond, we're about out of time. You have, you're prolific. You have so many books. You're prolific. Uh, any last thoughts for our viewers about your books or about the world in general? Uh, well, there's a lot more to come. I've got a book about Antarctica maybe coming out in the nice. next few years as well. And, um, you know, I'm just creative. I, I think everyone's got a book in them, yeah. um, you know, and, and they can just learn how to write or, or just learn how to not, not do it all at once. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is to finish it. Just get finish your it, ideas yeah. on, on the page and just work bit by bit to, to accomplish that. But yeah. I, I think everyone's got that. But uh, thank you very much. Yeah, and I tell you this, I'm glad you said that about getting started and getting finished, because there's over a million authors out there who have not finished their book. They've started and they're well sure. into yeah. it and they don't know what yeah. to do next. And I love to bring on authors that once you figured out how to get one out there, now you know how to do it and get them out there. Yeah. I guess the big trick yeah. is They'd, two, you two don't tricks. You perfect it. Just get it out there get and out then there. you can start to yeah. do that, yeah. Two tricks, starting and finishing. That sounds exactly. like that's the point exactly. I got from you today. Raymond, I love to talk to you. They only give us 10 or 12 minutes here, but I hope you'll come back and talk to us some more. 
Oh, definitely. Thank you very much, Mark. I'll, I'll stay in touch. All right. And for our viewers, stick around. We'll be back with another author uh, right after this. Thanks, Raymond. We'll be right back. Great. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Bye. And we're out. That was great. Okay. That was great, Thank Raymond. You very much.